Yo, what's up, guys? So I got PR 3x3 average at North American Championships. Super, super uh, hyped about it. 11th in the world. Second time I've got 11th in the world average. And the third time I've had to clutch PR average on F perm, which is what it is. Yeah, I'm super hyped about the average. Uh, I'll give you all kind of just like my general thoughts on, you know, my solutions and, and everything that I had thought. And then just like also where my head was at during all of this average. And uh, yeah, give you all some alternate solutions as well. See where maybe I could have done stuff better. And um, yeah, that's about it. Um, Hope you enjoy. Before I get started, shout out to Yummy for the reconstructions. Um, you know, always been a support of the channel. So thank you, bro. The scrambles are gonna be up on top of the screen, hopefully. Um, and I don't mess them up like I did for the hang video. Uh yeah, so we'll get started with scramble one. Okay, so scramble one here, I just did something pretty simple, stupid. Um, I did uh red blue here. Um, there's a pretty free pair, so I could have done something with this orange-blue pair, but, um, I remember tracing this, and I didn't really like what I had as options here, so I ended up just going for this. Um, there's also probably a cleaner way I could have done red-blue, but in the moment, I just kind of went for something straightforward into a back slot. Uh, if any additional information that I can get here is that this edge is going to be good whenever I finish my first pair, and this edge is going to be bad, and this this edge is going to be bad as well. So URF solves these three edges. Uh, like I said, this one's going to be bad. This one's going to be bad. This one's going to be good. Um, so now here when I do D2, I need to insert this red edge and that's going to split these into a pretty comfortable RU gen uh, solution from here. R prime F R D. So here's my first pair. Um, R prime U2 R and now normally here the best way to approach this is you want to do like U R prime U2 R just because you can say for home group a little bit easier and you know it just flows nicer um in this case though uh if I do like a U2 to insert this um I can cancel pretty comfortably from this pair into this is my next one whereas from here if I do this I should now do U2 and then it's a little bit awkward so here if I do U R prime U R now I can get this much cleaner continuation into this right so that's what I ended up going for um, and so now with the context of like what I saw in inspection of like three bad edges, one good edge, um, with these like flipped in their slot, like they're going to be bad even if I rotate here. So if I rotate and I solve this pair in the back, um, I'm going to have to rotate again for my next two pairs. So that's why I want to get this done out of the way now. And as well, when I solve this, um, and I rotate, now I have three good edges. So I dealt with my first pair with zero rotations, and then I dealt with my last three edges with one rotation. So I now don't have to rotate anymore myself. Um, so here, L prime U2L is a really nice situation here when you solve this. Again, this is generally just like the better insert to do, but as well, it says these are as a three mover, so L prime U2L. And this is what I trace, so I'm just going to use the three mover. Um, and then whenever you have this, like, you, can, I think this is like an edge cycle, so anytime you do a three mover, it cycles one piece relative to another piece one uh, turn away, so either brings us closer, or in this case, since I'm doing R prime U prime R, it cycles one over uh, this way. So now I know straight to go into this. And then this OLL normally is pretty mid, but because I'm doing an R prime to finish and I'm already in, in grip, I just did this. And then uh, F perm U2. So yeah, I had two F perms in average, pretty skull emoji. Um, but yeah, the solve was uh, 12.2 uh, STPS. Um, so yeah, I just turned good. I don't think there's anything too special about the solution. I literally just like kind of turned well. And uh, yeah, the, the thing is that I think I, I did good about making sure I um, dealt with a lot of edges without rotating. And I think my pair of choice was genuinely good here. And then I forced a three mover. So nothing crazy. Um, some other approaches you could have done here are like, uh, you could have done something with this free pair. Um, so you could do like L, F, R, and then like L, D, 2, L, prime, D. And then you have, you know, this this and like it's fine it's just well here you wouldn't sledge here you would insert but eh, you get dot so it's a little tricky i would just do this and then rotate it's kind of it's not ideal but the continuation's kind of bad there um so yeah that's one option you had and i think like what i ended up going for was fine obviously it worked out uh there's probably some smarter stuff you could have done um but yeah that's just what i ended up seeing and what i ended up executing on so on to solve two um Bro, if I'm being honest with you, I have no idea what the hell I did here. Uh, I've tried to do this recon a few times and I don't even know what to do. It's what? F prime, D prime, R, U, R prime, D two, U prime, F prime. He said this is a pseudo cross. This, like, yeah, I guess. 
And then I did L prime U2 L U D. So then I had this pair. I don't know why I would do this. And then I solved this. R U prime R2 U R Y prime Y prime R2 B prime R2 because I have to fix this cross edge. And then here's where I got lost. I did D prime U prime R U prime R prime U2 L prime U prime L U2. Oh, okay. So yeah, I did this pair for some reason. And then I solved this D prime L prime U L. And then here I did. Oh, okay. I see what I did here. So this is kind of the only cool part about this solve. This seems like a really crappy, um, like last two pairs, but you can actually do something really, really cool here. And I've, immediately after the solve, I had told my boys, I was like, bro, I did some pretty fire stuff on this solve. And they were like, oh, what'd you get? And I was like, 7.4. But whatever. It's not besides the point. Um, I already had the 5-1 in here. So I was trying not to take this too, too seriously. Because I knew that, like, you know, 5-1 is, like, a pretty decent first solve to start off on. And, you know, I obviously want to do good with that. Um, so, yeah. Here, um, what you can do, if instead of solving this just initially, and then you get stuck with this as your next pair. Um, if you insert this edge, you're going to get this edge inserted here. But I've been doing this ZBLS uh a lot and it actually sets up to this case so now when i do d2 i'm gonna rotate and then do u prime and when i do d2 u prime then i have this here so um this is just the zbl case i showed you uh so then i did r u prime r prime and then zbls d2 u and then just zb and i was i, I recognized that from the angle i had initially before that uf so immediately after that like i was like bro okay i'm not happy with the 74 if you look at the video like it's like oh did whatever but I was pretty hyped about this. I thought this was cool. I immediately after I told my boys, I was like, guys, I just did D2 pseudo ZBLS ZB on that solve. And it was a seven. I don't care. It was cool. Um, yeah. As for like what I was actually trying to do here. Oh, okay. I remember trying to inspect something here. Um, F prime, D prime. What I was trying to do is I was trying to do this pair. So like R2, U, R prime, D2, U prime, F prime like that which is like long and bad, but that's what I had seen. And then, you know, this continuation or whatever. But yeah, that was my initial idea here. Um, other stuff that I had looked at was like, you, I could have just made a free pair with this and that's what I was looking at like that. But I didn't like it because I don't really like solving my first pair in front, right? Looking at it now, this continuation is like pretty okay. Um, you can actually, oh, well, you can do ZB or dls from there whatever yeah it was um not ideal um overall uh like i i think i just was bad i i didn't inspect very well here i just didn't like that none of my eos were good um i honestly if i looked at this now what i would do is white here so if you do lb um you get this free pair and you do like u prime f prime d or well uh, F prime, L prime, F, D prime, R, D, R prime. And then you get that free pair there. And then you can do, um, that or something. I don't know. You can do some funny stuff there. It seems like there's a few other options. I remember I got to 12 and I hadn't really inspected well. And then I made a last second decision change to like try to do that free pair or try to make a free pair in FL. And it just didn't end up working out for me. So I had a very tricky situation, but I will say, look. D2, pseudo, ZBLS, ZB, that's Aura. On a solve three. Solve three is a four nine. So um, after the second solve, the variance here is so high, right? This average could go so many different ways. And I said this on my interview with Kevin, but I mean, like, I, I don't know what's going to happen here. Cause it's like, I have a five one and I have a seven four. And this is obviously round two. And you know, I'm pretty comfortably locked into getting simis. Um, but you know, I want to make something out of this 5-1. So here my solution was just to set up a free pair in uh, BL, which I saw pretty quickly. And then um, after that, I'm just trying to get any additional information. So I knew that this solve was likely going to be rotationless because um, if... So my solution here is I'm going to make red, green a free pair. So F, R, D, L, U, 2, R, prime, D, 2. And then, uh, so when I do that, this is going to be a good edge. This is going to be a good edge. This is going to be a good edge. So... Generally, if I'm from here, I did, this is technically a ZZ solve, I did uh, EO cross, but from here, it's like, I, I feel very good about my prospects, because it doesn't matter if 
I see my second pair or not, because generally I know I can do well with all EO scrambles. They are the easiest things to trace. There's very linear moves and pairs, and so you can very quickly, like, trace something. So, especially because I'm starting in, in BL for my first pair, and it's a three mover, and then I essentially knew I was doing EO cross, I was I was quite pleased with this. So, F, R, D, L, U, 2, R prime, D, 2, like I said. And then here you do uh, L, U, L prime. And then here I broke one of my, my cardinal rules, okay? I did, I did diag pairs. Um, so, I did, like, you solve these, and then you can go uh, straight into these. And then now this is just like insert this to sledge and then back soon u2 y perm u prime that was 11.4 tps which is like you know fine i have one 12 tps and one 11 tps solving this average um what i could have done better is my pair choice here is like l u l prime if i do this is my first pair then this transitions very comfortably and now i'm doing all r u gen and then i get a very clean continuation here if it was another after i think i'd have been kind of tilted but, I mean, look, I can't be too mad about this. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the, the big takeaway on this one, I think, because um, I, I, after the round, people were saying, like, oh, how'd you do so good on these scrambles? Like, I don't, I don't, I liked this scramble, even if it doesn't seem crazy, just because I knew the fact that I was going to get uh, all edges oriented for my F2L pairs. So, if you aren't able to see, like, your second pair, just try to get any additional information on, like, what the edge orientation is going to be of your second pair. Because that will inform your decision-making on if, like, you likely need to rotate or if you can stay from where you're at. If it's oriented, then uh, you can find the piece eventually. Like, if it's the corner, you can find the corner and then, like, pretty comfortably figure out the pair from there if you're tracing well uh, in first pair. So, yeah, I think um, that's something to keep keep in mind. So, yeah, FRD, LU2, RPM, D2, LU, RPM, and then... Um, yeah, this was really clean, just all our Eugen, and then lefty, and then uh, OLLPL. I don't think there's anything much better I could have done there. I think it is a very logical solution, um, and I was really happy with it, 4.9. So, yeah, on to solve 4. Okay, this is solve 4. Again, what I did is I set up a uh, free pair in BL, or like free pair, three mover, whatever, same thing. Um, I did yellow here. White looks fine. Like there's some stuff you could do. Um, like this general pattern, you can make a free pair. So you can do like R, F prime, L prime, R, B2, D, R, prime, R2, D prime. And then you would have, you know, whatever here. Um, this would be a lesson before. So like, that's like an option, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't have done that. Uh, just because I don't like having pairs in the front, as I've said before. So what I did instead is I opted to go for a free pair um, in BL on yellow. Uh, and I also got some additional information on my edges here. So I knew this was going to be a bad edge. And I knew that this was going to be a bad edge. So L, R prime. And the way you actually make the three mover here is like F, U prime, F. Which, when I was inspecting, I was slightly concerned about this, because I knew I had the counting 5.1, uh, and obviously I want to make something good out of this average, so I was very nervous that this F U prime F solution would be kind of tricky, but I went for it anyway, D L prime D2, and I got pretty bailed here, so again, like I said, this is why it's really important to get information on, like, my EOs, because I knew I was going to need to rotate after my first pair, but in this case, I did L U 12 prime, and um, then I was here, and so now, same thing as solve one, I have three good edges after one rotation, because I was smart about my uh, rotation. This is kind of a lucky situation that I was able to get here, but if I didn't have the context of this, I wouldn't be expecting a situation like this going into it, right? Um, so yeah, here I think I made a slight wrong decision. If I do U2, L, U prime, L prime, I actually get this really nice continuation, and then like, whatever this into that. Um, and so, if... If I got the same last layer, that is the better approach to this, like, continuation from here. But instead what I did is I did, uh, U prime, LU 2 L prime, because again, this is just better for home grip. And my general rule of thumb is I want to avoid top-facing F2L corners. Um, these are just, like, the worst of the sets. Um, but in this case, like, it's actually better because, you know, this is a really nice solution here. But yeah, instead I did U, LU 2 L prime, and then U2, and just, like, spam solve this, and then I can really easily go into that. And then I did U prime H PLL skip. So that was a 436 uh, with the PLL skip. And that's like 10 TPS either way. So, I mean, I, like with a PLL skip, 10 TPS is like not actually that bad. So I, I think like, 
I didn't get carried too hard. I did get rewarded for making a objectively wrong decision, which is like the one thing I can say. Um, which I mean, you know, every PR average has some luck in it. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? Um, so yeah, like I would have never expected to be on a pace like this. Like having a five one four nine counting. Like obviously I don't know what BPA is, but BPA is insane, dude. So I'm like. I'm, I'm pooping my pants. I wasn't on stream for any of my solves because Greiser and Max were in the higher seeds in round one. So um, they finally put me on stream for solve five. And that was really nerve wracking for me because I knew that I, I was on crazy pace and doing my last solve on stream was really nerve wracking. But yeah, let's look at solve five. I did a breakdown of solve five on stream immediately after this average. Um, I don't think Sol 5 is anything too special. I did fine and then made mistakes when it counted the most. So free pair with yellow R L2 F prime D. Um, I did say on stream that like this F prime push is kind of risky, especially on Sol 5 with like this crazy phase. I I was really nervous by doing that F prime move, but this is the only thing I saw and I just had to go for it. D R U R. Um, this is a three mover. I didn't really get any additional like EO information. I was just bad. So L U L prime, and then I didn't see anything. This was the first part I saw. I did like, I did like R prime, and then R two. When I did this R prime, I lucky saw this corner, so that was honestly goaded. Because when I did this R two, um, this is a really nice multi slot. When I solve this, this is going to become a three mover. So five mover into three mover, and then my last edge is an F R, which I generally strive for. And then this is where like s the last pair is where like a lot of stuff could have gone a lot better. So I'll run through pretty much every situation I had here. Um, what I did in the solve was I did R, U prime, R prime, which is dumb. There's no reason to do this at all ever. Um, the one thing I could say is like, it actually sets me up to the sludge EO, which I don't know if that's good or not, but it is something to note that I can now do sludge EO and, and solve. I didn't even do that. So unnecessary, like three moves and then ended up just doing the same pair solution. And then I had, this is my OLL and my main ALG here is like this like that and i had a pretty big lock up on this here uh the ol tps was uh, okay, i don't know uh, the tps on OLLs, whatever but yeah here i did this and i had a little bit of a lock up there and then u2 f frame so like i said earlier this is like the third pr average that I've, I've had to clutch with f perm 546 578 and now 539 all clutched with uh f perm on solve 5 which is so cringe dude actually so annoying like but yeah, so I'll show you some other routes I could have gone down from here. Um, if I was really smart and I looked ahead to this pair, um, I could have done this rotationlessly. And this is just like, you know, this you also had before, right? I could have just done like insert. Um, what's what's hard is that here I generally don't do it with this type of EO because I always think this is gonna give me dot, but it actually gives me line. And if I did this, I get U S X D F prime into U perm, um, which that could have been insane. That could have been top ten of the world average. Or if I did this, same continuation, I could have done insert, and then um, if I was smart, I could have done sledge, and then I could have got this CB, so like, back anti soon, soon. But yeah, and or I could have just done insert, and then from here, if I do like this alternate alg, like F, inverse sexy, R from FMR, insert, I could have got U2J perm. That's like a much more findable continuation from there, because like, obviously, like, it's the OL I had, and... I think just like instinct took over. It's just I just did the alg that I've known longer because obviously I, I know that I'm on good pace and like going into like fourth pair, I knew that I was actually pacing pretty decent on this solve, so I wanted to make the most out of it if I can help it. Um yeah, those are kind of all the continuations on fourth pair. I don't really think that I could have done anything much different for cross. Like I inspected what I could and and I think I was pretty clean and happy with it. And uh I just didn't expect to actually be on good pace going into fourth pair, and so that's why I made a mistake. And then um yeah, my two crucial mistakes there were um, missing the sledge insert to give me good 2GLO, which honestly I'm glad I missed because I don't know that 2GLO that well, and now I am going to learn it very well because if I had done that, I'd have gotten decent average. I, honestly, I know that if I got that on Sol 5, I wouldn't have been able to recognize it cleanly and I would have done the wrong ALG and I would have been coping harder than if I just did standard OLA PLL, so not too mad. Overall, what can we learn from this average? Um, just check EOs. Like, a lot of people didn't say they like these scrambles, but... If you are looking at EOs of your next pair uh, while you're doing inspection, it makes your life a lot easier for you and you can actually inform your decision making going forward. So you don't need to see second pair as long as you know the EOs of your solves. 
or your your pairs going forward um that can help out a lot obviously if you know both like what pieces are and the eo then like that's really good and you can also use eo to make predicting your second pair a lot easier so that's like the main thing i would say as for how i feel about this average like i'm relatively happy with it getting an average solve on solve five here is like really hard especially because there's so much variance with the seven in the average already and i never thought i would be on this pace nar bpa is insane um yeah i'm just glad i held it together somewhat but of course there are always things to learn from and uh i wasn't perfect here so um yeah thank you again to yomi for the reconstructions and shout out to stewie for putting it on recode.nz i'm not super happy with this average obviously there's like mistakes but um i think this is a very good sign that i can do better in comp than i thought i could previously so thank y'all for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Bye.